In this video, I want to show you how to go about calculating the energy yield that you would get for a fatty acid that has an even number of carbons. So for example, we have an 18 carbon fatty acid. Before we can bring, begin to break it down via beta oxidation, we need to turn that 18 carbon fatty acid into an 18 carbon acyl-CoA. Once we have that activated fatty acid, the acyl-CoA, this acyl-CoA can go through beta oxidation. So I've drawn here 18 carbons. Now this is representing the acyl-CoA itself. So how many rounds of beta oxidation will this thing go through? Well, the simple way to figure that out is draw out all these carbons, 18 different carbons, and clip off two at a time. And the reason why is because each round of beta oxidation clips off an acetyl-CoA, right, which is two carbons. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds of beta oxidation. Now, if that's eight rounds of beta oxidation, how many acetyl-CoA's do we actually make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two carbon molecules, which is nine acetyl-CoA's. Cool. So now, these acetyl-CoA's can go through the, the Krebs cycle. So, what I've drawn here is that if we have an 18 carbon acyl-CoA and it goes through eight cycles of beta oxidation, then we're going to have to add one FAD, one NAD+, and one coenzyme A for every cycle of beta oxidation. So, because each one, one of these is used up um, in each cycle. So, we're going to have eight FAD, eight NAD+, pluses, and eight coenzyme A's used up, one for each of the cycles of beta oxidation. Now when that happens, we create 9 acetyl-CoA's. And then how many NADHs and FADH2's do we make? Well, those, these come from uh, the rounds of beta oxidation themselves. So we're going to have 8 NADHs and 8 FADH2's. These 8 FADs were uh, reduced to these 8 FADH2's and these 8 NAD pluses were reduced to these 8 NADHs. So now, these things can go to the electron transport chain. But this acetyl-CoA, these acetyl-CoA's go to the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle. And when they go to the Krebs cycle, each acetyl-CoA goes through the Krebs cycle once and yields three NADHs, one FADH2, and one GDP. So now that's for, that's for one acetyl-CoA. We have nine, so we're going to multiply these values by nine. And when we do that, we get... 27 NADHs, 9 FADH2s, and 9 GTPs. But now we also have to, basically what we're doing here is we're totaling all these NADHs and FADH2s and GTPs that we have because they're all valued at some sort of energy. So these over here, these NADHs and FADH2s, right, we're going to add them right there. So we have 8 NADHs, 8 FADH2s. So if we total this all up, we have 35 NADHs total. 17 FADH2s and 9 GTPs. Now, all of these have a particular ATP value, which I've drawn here. This is their ATP value. So these NADHs are valued at 2.5 each. So that's, if you multiply 35 times 2.5, you should get 87.5. And then 17 times 1.5 is 25.5. And then, of course, the 9 GTP. They're all valued at 1. So if you add these all up, you'll get a gross value of 122 ATP. Now, you net only 120 ATP. Now, why is that? The reason why is because we have to subtract 2 for the activation step. In this case, I asked about breaking down an even-numbered fatty acid, right, into for energy. But I asked for, for a fatty acid in particular. This step, taking this fatty acid and activating it to an acyl-CoA, this costs you 2 ATP. So you have to subtract 2 ATP there. So that's what's, what's going on there. However, if I had asked you instead for, you know, to calculate the energy for an 18-carbon acyl-CoA, you wouldn't sub subtract this number here because the, the thing was already um, activated. So you would not subtract 2 oops, not subtract, <laughs> subtract to ATP if you 
had been asked for an 18 carbon acyl CoA because an acyl CoA is already activated, right? So you wouldn't have to worry about that activation step. So you would just you would actually net 122 ATP, right? But that's only if you started off with an acyl CoA. Okay. Hope that video was helpful, and thank you for watching.